Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun light up card for you. It features the caffeinated dinosaur from the rabbit hole designs. It's a really fun stamp set. It's got the hashtag death before decaf up in the, the top there for the sentiment. And I love the way it turned out. Um, I also have a sneak peek for you, um, an easy way to make light up cards. So I'll show you that here. To get started with my card, the first thing I'm going to do is stamp out my dinosaur. I'm pre-treating my paper with an anti-static powder tool, and then I will ink up the stamp with VersaFine Claire ink. This stays wet long enough to emboss with. So I'll go ahead and sprinkle on some clear embossing powder, and that powder tool just keeps any um, stray embossing powder from sticking where you don't want it. So I can heat up the powder with my heat gun. That will melt it and give me a nice raised finish with a little bit of shine to it. Really makes images pop, so I, I try to emboss whenever I can. The next thing I want to do is add Push Me to the cup because I'm going to line up the button for the switch right underneath the mug there. And little stamps like this can sometimes be tricky. You get them all lined up and then when you pull your fingers away, it, it sticks to your finger. Um, but once you get it lined up, go ahead and ink it up. And we'll just repeat the process here to emboss it. So I'm sprinkling on some powder. And then I'm going to bring in the heat tool and melt that up. Now he's ready to color. I'm going to color with Copic markers, and they say not to use Copic markers with embossed images because you can uh, damage the tips of your markers. I haven't had a problem with it, but I'm not uh, writing up on the, the um, embossed edges. I'm, I'm just going right up next to it. And did you catch my little mistake there? <laughs> on his foot, I meant to, uh, to just color his foot and not the slipper yet, but... It's okay, I have a, a fix for that. Since the whole card is a purple monochromatic feel, uh, I'm just gonna give it some purple undertones for his slipper there. What you saw me do is color first with the, the pale lilac, that V12 there, lay down a base coat. Then I came in with my darkest color where I want the deepest shadows. And then I came back in with a mid-tone. And then I came in again with the, the light purple to um, to even it out. And you can see me with the slippers here. I add some more purple to them and then some shades of red. And then that just, uh, it kind of looks like a purple reflection coming off of the shoes or the slippers. I love how his toenail pokes through. I could have done the same thing with the mug, but I wanted to, um, to make that button really stand out. And then you saw after it dried back, it it wasn't quite as blended as I wanted. So I gave it one more coat of the lightest shade of purple. And then I've die cut all of my um, other pieces here off camera, just to save some time for you. I cut them all out of purple. I've got a, a mountain background here. And I'm bringing in, I have three different shades of purple of Distress Oxide ink. And I'm using those to basically silhouette my images, everything that's Far away is a darker purple, and as it gets closer, it becomes lighter. I wanted this to feel like a, an early pre-dawn sky with the uh, meteor heading towards them. And I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of this Heffy Doodle memo tape here. It's a, just a roll of basically post-it tape. The whole back is sticky, and it's really awesome. It, it's the same tackiness as post-it tape, so it... It releases without sticking too much, um, but it also holds in place great for ink blending. And I'm just creating a horizon, and then I'm going to use that tape to hold it so I don't get ink all over my fingers and put fingerprints on my mountains. And then I'm just going to lightly add some more shading to the bottom. Uh, as the ground is further away, it's a little bit darker. Now these leaves will be in the very forefront. I kind of want it to feel like you're poking your head through the... Uh, the trees and looking in on this scene. So I added just a little bit of color to them. And I wasn't really happy with that color because I didn't want to push too hard. So I got kind of foam impressions on those leaves. So I'll fix those in a minute. But while I have my darker colors out, I'm going to 
add some shading to the dinosaurs. These are just other di die cut dinosaurs here. And I'll use some of these darker colors. I won't make these as dark as the mountains because they're closer, but they still uh, should be darker than the leaves that'll be in the very front. And that one is a little bit pinker than the other, so I'm gonna add some more color here. Just get them the way I want them. And then now I need to do the skyline. And I did not want the, uh, the entire background to be purple because where the meteor is coming in, I want to add red and yellow. So I didn't want purple there. Um, so I'm starting with a white cardstock base, it's A2 sized. And I traced the outline of the mountains just lightly on there so I know how far to make sure I get my ink down to. And before I go too far with that really pale milled lavender um, and the other colors, I'm gonna take the leaf shaped die that I'm using to cut the window for my meteor. And I'm gonna just trace around it. I gave it a good eighth of an inch at least around it. Um, just cutting it out of that same little piece of memo tape. And I'm gonna mask off part of the sky so that I can add some red and yellow um, ink there um, on the edges of the window. And once I get that lined up, I can go ahead and darken up my sky with these darker shades of purple. And I'm creating a, a vignette, so it's darker around the edges and lighter in the center. And I'm using that milled lavender just to blend everything. And while I have that milled lavender out, I'm gonna fix those leaves so that they don't look, um, so that you won't see the sponge impressions from the darker color that I put on there. And now I wanna bring in some black soot distress oxide to go around the edges. So I'll get these other pads out of the way. And I'll come in with this just to deepen up the sky a little bit. And that pad, that foam pad that I'm using to apply ink is falling apart. I need to replace it. <laughs> those look like bugs, but those aren't bugs. That's just black foam that's falling off and jumping around as I move the pieces around. So once I get my sky all inked up the way I like it, um, I can go ahead and remove that masking paper. And now I'll bring in some of that red and yellow ink. And I'm just using Fantastics. I've had these forever. They're little foam tipped, uh, basically pencils, but just with foam tips. They give you uh, nice control and a set of them was really cheap. I have basically one for each color family. And I'm using the red and the yellow and then I'll bring in a little more of that milled lavender just to kind of blend it all in into the sky there. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna die cut most of that away but I just wanted it to kind of feel like a, the glow around the meteor coming in. So I'll go ahead and line up my die, run it through the big shot, and you can see it's a leaf, <laughs> but we'll discard that. Now I've got the window. So it's time to build the circuit underneath. I've got, um, a purple card base here. It's the same color cardstock, the same cardstock I was using for those uh, die cut dinosaurs and, and mountains. I want it all to coordinate. And I will bring in my caffeinated dino and the sky, and I am gonna mark off where I want my LED and also where I want the button to be right underneath that yellow cup. So I'm kind of eyeballing it, but it's a it's hard to line that up exactly, so I'll bring the dinosaur back in. I know roughly where I want him. And now this is your sneak peek. This is called a power pack. This is something my husband and I invented, and we will have them on the market for you very soon. It is basically a super simple way to make light up cards. It's a battery holder and a switch, so you don't have to build that yourself. You just complete the circuit from the switch to your light with some copper tape. It's really easy. When I figure out exactly where I want my button, I'm gonna trace around this, and it'll all be covered up later, so I'm not worried about that. 
And you can see there's a plus and minus on my power pack. I'll be sure to mark that in just a second here. I'm gonna stick it to my card base with a piece of super tape. This is just a really strong double stick tape. And I'll go ahead and tape it in place here. And you can see the plus and the minus clearly marked. And then these are Chibitronic uh, LED stickers. And it's small, but it is printed on here. There is a plus and a minus on the pads. And it's easier for me to remember that the uh, smaller pad is the negative side, is the minus. So that's how I remember it. Um, I'm going to check the placement. Since it's already a sticker, you just stick it down. And we're just going to run the plus side to the plus side and the minus side to the minus side with some copper tape. So I'll draw out the circuit here for you. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier for me to show you. And you see how I've got a line on either side? I like my copper tape to come across the pad rather than just lead right up to it and end on the pad. I want it to, to get as much coverage on that LED sticker as possible. On the uh, power pack pads, those are big pads, so you've got plenty of space there. But the Chibitronics is a little small, and I want to make sure that I get really good contact with that. So I'll go ahead and run the minus side to the minus side. You with me so far, right? Easy. And I'm burnishing it down with a bone folder. You can use your fingernail. You just want to get it uh, good and contacted. And now the adhesive, the, or sorry, the copper tape in this kit has conductive adhesive. That means the electricity can flow through the bottom of the copper tape instead of just going over the top because the electricity flows through the adhesive. Some adhesives are not conductive, um, but this copper tape is. So I'm going to go ahead and, and burnish those down. I want to make sure I have good contact as much as possible. If you ever have a problem with a circuit sticker or a, um, an LED card like this, more than likely it's a copper tape issue. So I try to make sure everything is burnished nicely. And you can see the LED, that little yellow dot in the middle, that's my light. No tape is touching it. And then there's a little black resistor right next to it. No copper tape is touching that either. And then you push the button and it works. See that? So remember, plus side to plus side, minus side to minus side. Easy, right? Now it's just a matter of covering it all up. So I um, am going to take my background here. And I decided I wanted the background to lay flat to the back of the card. The power pack is about the thickness of a double layer of foam tape. So I'm just going to cut that little bit out of there so that um, I can glue the rest of it flat to the card. And then I will pop up the mountains so that I get a little more dimension and layers to my card. And I started to glue this to the card base before I remembered that I wanted to cover up that window. <laughs> um, I've got two pieces of vellum here. I wasn't sure if I was going to use one or two layers, so I, I just grabbed two scraps. These are thicker scraps. Um, I've had them in my stash forever. I'm not sure if it's the heavyweight Judikins vellum or if it's my Stampin' Up! cardstock vellum. It, it is heavier than, than regular vellum. And I grab both layers here, and I wanted to give it a little bit of color. So I grab that yellow Copic marker there. And then I'm gonna test it out. And I decided I don't really like all that white space either, so I grabbed a red marker as well. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red flames to the background there. This just gives me some color. And you see how it hides that copper tape for the most part? Now I'll just glue these two windows around the opening, or 
the two pieces of vellum around the opening of the window. Very easy. And then I can trim away the extra. And now it's ready to go ahead and glue to my card base. Making sure that I like the amount of light that comes through. So I'll go ahead and glue this flat to my card base. And now I can add my mountains. And like I said, the power pack is about the thickness of a double piece or a, a double layer of foam tape. So I'll go ahead and put my pieces roughly in place here. And I was just checking to make sure that I left myself enough room for foam tape around the edges of the power pack, and I did. Um, so I'll grab my foam tape, double it up here, and then I can go ahead and stick it onto the mountain background. I really like to give my cards extra layers or dimension, so I often use a lot of foam tape or layers of uh, die cut layers, that kind of thing, just to, to give interest to my card. So I'm going to just speed through the rest of this here for you. You don't, you don't want to watch me add a bunch of foam tape. But I will go ahead and uh, make sure to leave an opening for the power pack so I'm not accidentally bumping up the paper too high. Then I can stick it in place. And you can feel where that button is. It's, it's hard to, to see by looking at it, but when you're touching it, you can totally feel it through the paper. It doesn't stick up above the paper. But, but it's very easy to feel. Now I can just glue on my other die cut pieces here. And the higher I put the legs of these dinosaurs, the further away they look, the closer they are to the horizon. So I'm just gonna kind of stagger them a little bit. And then my colorful dinosaur will be down at the bottom because he'll be close to us. And I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. It dries clear and matte, so there, there won't be any shine. You won't notice any glue residue if you get it all over the place like I just did. Before I glue him down, um, I had cut him out with my scan and cut, and it, I think I need to calibrate it again, um, it left me a little smidge of a white border. And instead of trimming it up with my scissors, I decided to just color it with a gray marker. I could have used the purple too, but... I thought the gray might give me a little bit more of a shadow. Now I'll go ahead and glue him in place. And I want to take extra care to line up that push me right over the button. And you'll see me push the button like a million times in this video because it is a lot of fun. <laughs> I like light up cards. They are fun. Uh, now I'm going to just add these leaves in the front. Um, this is the... Uh, it's a leaf from the uh, large funky floral set. And it's got some great, great stuff in there. And I just kind of wanted it to look like you're peeking through the jungle into this scene here. So I'm putting them down at the bottom in the front. And I probably could have edited some of this out for you, but... Just playing with placement here. Once I get it all glued down, I can bring in my scissors and then trim off the little pieces that are hanging over the edge. And I'm going to switch to my larger scissors here. They're longer. It's easier for me to cut a straight line and just line it up with the base of the card there. Love those scissors. Nothing sticks to them either. They're great. 
Okay, so now it's time for my sentiment. Because I had inked the background with the stress oxide, that stays wet for quite a while. So I'm gonna just go ahead and um, ink it now when it's good and dry. And I'll go ahead and line it back up in my Misty, treat the paper with an anti-static powder tool, and then repeat the process when I'm stamping with the VersaFine Claire. And then I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss this as well. And that um, anti-static powder tool really does help get the um, stray embossing powder off. And when it's all melted, you have a really nice sentiment. It's raised and shiny and, and it's fun. Okay, so in that same funky floral set, there's also this tree branch, which I die cut out of the same vellum. And I thought it would look cool, like uh, flames and smoke kind of coming out of the side of the, or the edge, following behind the meteor. So I'm gonna grab those same two uh, red and orange markers, and then I'll even bring in a gray marker to add some smoke. And I'm gonna put this on here make sure that I've colored enough of the areas here. And when I layered both of them up, it seemed like they were both curving up rather than trailing behind and maybe billowing out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this bigger piece over so that I've got the yellow going up and the red kind of going the other direction behind him. Just kind of evens it out a little bit there. And then I decided to bring in some gray. I tried a C7 first, but it's a little too light. Uh, so I'm gonna bring in my C9, and I'm just gonna test the color, and I like it. So I'll just add some just lines here, kind of along the edges. Just no real rhyme or reason to look like smoky edges trailing up. I'll add it to both pieces. And somehow I flipped that over and I put the gray on the wrong side. So I'll fix that in a second here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I like the direction that I'm going with this. And I wanted to add a little more red here. The flame is cooler further away, so it would be red further away. The yellow is hotter and closer, I believe. I hope. <laughs> if you're ever trying to build a scene and you're not quite sure, go ahead and Google the, the type of scene that you're looking for and pull up some images and it'll give you some good ideas. It also helps you figure out your light sources and that kind of stuff. So I'm fairly happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these down and I will trim it up a little bit more here in just a second. My adhesive is the same, the, the PVA glue in a fine line bottle. When you're gluing vellum down, it's, um, it's a good rule of thumb to try to add the adhesive to the entire piece because sometimes you can see it when it dries. Uh, some adhesives are a lot more noticeable than others, like foam tape would be a big white block behind it, so you would really notice it. There is a clear, like Gorilla Glue makes a clear spongy, basically a foam tape, except it's not foam and it's completely clear, so you can use that behind vellum. Um, when I'm using wet glue like this, if I apply glue to the whole entire thing, when it dries, even if you can see a little bit of it, it looks the same, so, so you don't notice it. it. It just blends in and it looks like it's part of the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these little pieces. I did take one one little piece that I had cut off and I tucked it back in to look more like a flame. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do is um, kind of add some more color to the edge of my comet line there, or meteor line. And I'm using my Copic markers again, and I, in case I get any of the Distress ink, I can just go ahead and rub it off on a scrap piece of paper there. Uh, yellows are especially susceptible to picking up other colors, so. That's what I was doing there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and darken that up. The, the opening that I left there ended up being 
lighter and a little too pink. So I darken it up with my markers and then I even brought in a V12 to kind of blend into the background. And as it dries, it all blended smoothly. So this is it, that finishes up my card. There's no glitter because this is for my husband and he thinks glitter is the devil. <laughs> and I, I like the, the monochromatic feel to this. This is definitely up my husband's alley. So let me know what you think of this card down in the comments below. You can find me up on the Rabbit Hole Designs blog as well as my own blog where I've got links to all of the products that I used. If you like today's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, please. Subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss any new ones. And here are a few more videos you may like. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.